as the outpouring of grief washed over us after the fire at Notre Dame a couple of weeks ago, many people sighed with relief when it became clear the Grand Orc had been saved, if slightly damaged. Blind organist David Abrahamian Liddell played the great instrument in 2002 and shares his memories of that experience along with this actual recording of his concert. In London, I met Olivier Latry, who was one of the four organists of Notre Dame at that time. Uh, one of the others, actually, was a blind man, Jean-Pierre Leguet, with whom I corresponded in Braille for some time. But uh, I said when I met Latry that I would love to uh, be considered to play at Notre Dame in Paris, and he said he'd be glad to add my name to the waiting list. But he did warn me that the waiting list was up to four years long, so uh, I wasn't expecting anything for quite a while, but in fact, it, it was probably only about two years that I had to wait. Every visiting recitalist gets the Saturday night, I think it's about three or four hours on the Saturday night, locked in the cathedral to practice for the Sunday recital. I felt that having to get to know my way around the organ and practice my set up and practice my entire program for my concert was a bit ambitious to do in three or four hours so I um, wrote to the authorities and asked if there was any chance I could go over and have a preliminary practice they kindly granted me that and I went over in the November six months earlier and had a whole evening on the Notre Dame organ getting to know it then I went back to London and uh, I'd, I'd recorded on a memo machine uh, my description of the organ when I was there, and so when I got home, I brailled it up all in sort of chart forms. And uh, the organ there has a playback system, an automatic playback system uh, done digitally, which records every movement of the keys and the stops that you make. And during your practice, you are required in the contract to play your entire recital program from beginning to end without any hesitation, you know, and then they play it back to make sure they've got it. So that takes a lot of the practice time. And I think the reason for that is probably in case any of the recitalists throw a wobbly or, or take an ill or something happens, they can actually make your recital play on the Sunday without you even being there. Well, it's a very emotional experience for somebody who's been playing the organ for years and learning the music of many French composers because as you climb that spiral staircase in the southwest tower, you think of all the people who've gone up and down those stairs before you, like César Franck and, uh, and Louis Vierne, who was himself organist of Notre Dame from 1900 until his death at the organ in 1937. He was partially sighted. I think the Americans would describe him as legally blind. And he, he learnt his music in Braille initially, although he could see if the music was written out very large. Um, and Jean Langlais, Gaston Littes, and then my own teacher, André Marchal, all of them blind. And you know that this organ, which is very loud uh, when you're playing it, is projecting its sound all the way down this vast building. So it's very, very thrilling, very exciting and uh, extremely nerve-wracking for somebody like me who was just a visitor getting to play there on one occasion and wanting to do your very best. It was really like being in a trance. That's the nearest I can describe it. You are very caught up with the detail. You can't let yourself be carried away. You've got an assistant who's... Uh, pressing buttons at your command or at least that's what I did and I think that's what most people do uh, it's called a sequencer button which brings out the stops that you've set in your practice uh, in the sequence that you want them to come in and out um, so you've got all those things to think of 
and the sound is just blowing your mind and as I say putting you into a bit of a trance but afterwards I would say I was mentally shattered. (laughs) 